Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, right triangles and trigonometry. Specifically I'm going to talk about sine, cosine, and tangent. Now sine, cosine, and tangent, when you're talking about a right triangle, simply refers to the relationship between two sides, or the ratios between two sides, and what we can do to figure them out. So uh, there's a bunch of ways to remember that sine, because you know why would you not write out the e when you could simplify it to this, which is what you'll see. Sine of x, and x is relative, and I'll talk about that in a minute, is the opposite side over the high, uh, hypotenuse. The cosine, that makes a little better sense, that's much better as an abbreviation, is the adjacent side versus the hypotenuse. And I'll talk about what that means too. And tangent of x is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So you sort of have to figure out how you want to go about remembering that type of stuff. You know, the really popular one is so ka toa sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So there's so ka toa. I'm not a huge so ka toa fan because I just never did it when I was you know, coming up. So to me, I always had uh, the old aardvark sat on Henry's coat and hat. So as you can see, the old aardvark sat on Henry's coat and hat. Gives you all the stuff and the way you want to go. So pick a method so you can remember what the formulas are and then stick with it. That way you can always have something that you can go back to. A lot of times not having the formulas memorized is seen as very weird and not in a good way because it's difficult to use. Now the thing about the ratios is it's a matter of perception the sign coming out of this angle is different than the sign coming out of this angle. So you have to be, it's relative, that's important. Now, if I want to deal with, and by the way, I'm going to call these sides A, B, and C. So I need to pick my angle of reference, and for this one, I'm going to pick this purple angle right here. It's now purple anyway. So what you might want to consider doing in the beginning is drawing a line sort of almost like you're trying to fly a plane out of a hangar that's really tight walled you don't want to slam into it so just go straight out that op that side that's across from it that's your opposite side the hypotenuse is the one that's opposite the right angle so it's your longest side so hypotenuse but I'm just going to put HYP there and the adjacent side is just the other one, really. I mean, I hate to be that way about it. Sorry, adjacent side. But adjacent means next to, and here's the angle that you're using. No matter which of the two angles you use, you'll never set that up with the, the right angle. It would make any sense, at least when you're using right triangles. Um, but the one next to it that's not the hypotenuse is considered the adjacent side. So I'll just put ADJ there. A, C, E, and T is the rest of it. But... So the opposite side would be the one across from the angle you're interested in. The adjacent side would be the one next to it that's not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the big one across from the right angle. So once you get that all set up, it's actually pretty easy to get answers. So let's look at the types of problems that you might see in the early going stages of this type of uh, skill. So in this one, the very first thing they'll always ask you to do is just name the ratios. So there's a couple different ways that they may ask you about that. The big deal about this type of question is they want you to gain perspective. It says tangent of x. So there's x, so mark it. Tangent is the old aardvark, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side here is 27, so the tangent of x is equal to 27 over the uh, adjacent side would be the non-hypotenuse side, so the other one. See, this is the hypotenuse, it's the long side, so it's the 36. 
and you're often asked to reduce it. Sometimes they even want the decimal version. Um, 9 goes into 27 three times. 9 goes into 36 four times. So 3 fourths is that um, ratio. Sine. Sine of A. Sine is sat on Henry's, so sine is on Henry's hypotenuse opposite. So the sine of A here is what I'm looking for. The opposite side is the side that's across from it, going straight out. It's the 20. The hypotenuse, of course, is the long side, so 29. Now they may want you to leave it at 20 over 29. They may want a decimal answer, which would give you something in the range of 0.69, something like that. Whatever they're looking for, give it to them. And I'll see if there's a cosine one. There is. All right. So cosine of x, here's that. Go ahead and do this. Coat and hat. So hypotenuse adjacent cosine. So the cosine of x here is equal to the adjacent side. See, this is my opposite side. So I'm not even using that. It's the adjacent side, which is the 24, over the hypotenuse, which is 25, because it's across from that right angle. So it might be a good idea to just have something to help you mark. Just be consistent on what you do so you don't get it mixed up. Like if you start drawing lines to everything, then the line you draw makes no sense. All I know is to me, the line going across tells me the opposite side. I don't need it here, but I might. Uh, let's look at the idea of perspective. If I'm doing it from Z, the cosine is still the same thing. Coded hat still plays here. The problem is the cosine of Z is quite different because there's the opposite side, so I don't need that one. The adjacent side would be this angle. And there's the hypotenuse. So it's not the same as it was before because this is the cosine of z. So be very careful about what angle you're using. So that's the first type that you'll end up dealing with. The next type is the most popular, and it is to tell you what the value of the sides are. So we'll use sine cosine tangent to do that. My suggestion again, mark the side of interest. So here, just like that. So this has given me an opposite side and adjacent side. You'll notice there's nothing up here. So this is opposite over adjacent. That would be tangent, because of the old aardvark. Tangent, old aardvark. So tangent of 27 is equal to x over 12. <clears throat> and now we're just solving an equation. Sort of, what do you need to do to get x by itself? Well, it's times 12. Yuck. You're kind of yucky there for a second. Times 12. So those cancel and x. So when I'm doing this in the old calculator, I'm using a TI-84 variant. Actually, I'm using an emulator of the TI-84+. Um, the first thing you want to do is go to the mode and make sure that you are in degrees. Because if you are in radians, you'll get the wrong answer. These types of questions aren't asking in radians, they're asking in degrees. That's the degree symbol there. So tangent 27 times 12 gives me around 6.1. Sometimes it'll tell you what it wants you to round it to. I think this might be even rounded to the tenths place or to the ones. Okay, to the tenths. Good. Here's the thing that hopefully you didn't leave. Like You're like, oh, I got this, and then you just move on. Um, the thing about this type of question is that a lot of people do is they get really excited and they think, oh, well, I just find the angle and then multiply by the number. Not always. So just be careful that you don't dive into that. Set the problem up so that you can see it. That's an important issue. Here's one. 73 is supposed to be here, so the opposite side would be here. This is an opposite over hypotenuse question. So set on Henry's. Opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 73 is equal to x over 15. This one's a pretty simple one. Times 15 gets rid of divide by 15. x is equal to
14.4, 14.3, something like that. There you go. Trying to find one that <clears throat> I know will give you answers that are no f not as much fun. Here we go. So in this one, here's my angle. It's not the opposite side, so that's empty. So this is an adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is a coat and hat situation. So the cosine of 63 degrees Actually, this will, you know, this will do what I want, I think. So, equals, the adjacent side here is 18. You'll notice that the x is the long side, so 18 over x. Now, your general thought when you first start doing these is multiply by 18, and I'm good to go. Wrong. This problem is not set up that way. You're solving for x. So the only thing you can really do is get rid of the divide by x by multiplying both sides by x. This is really x over 1, so those cancel, and get 18 here, and x times the cosine of 63 degrees. Now, still not done. I need to get rid of times cosine 63 by dividing by cosine 63. The more you do this type, You'll start to get a feel for, really, if it's the variables on the bottom, you just take the numerator and divide by the, the cosine, or whatever the ratio happens to be. But, you know, it takes a little while to get a feel for it. Cosine 18 divided by cosine of 63, 39. So, let's talk about whether this is a reasonable answer or not. This is the smallest side and it's 18. This is much bigger and it's 39. That's a reasonable answer. Now if you do it the other way where you do cosine 63 times 18, you'll get 8. Well obviously this side is not smaller than this side. Even the ones saying not drawn to scale are usually sort of close. So. Just think about whether the answer is reasonable or not, and you'll do yourself a huge favor. One more like this, and then we'll go with the last type, which is inverse. Now, in this case, here's my angle of reference, opposite over adjacent, because the hypotenuse is not used. So this is a tangent question. The old aardvark. So tangent of 39 is equal to 13 over x. It's not just conveniently x over 13 because that math is easier. It's not how it works. So times x, those cancel, times x over here, x times tangent of 39, divide by the tangent of 39, x is equal to 16.1. And I have to think, is that reasonable? 39 is not very big, so this angle's, this side's probably a little bigger because that would make this angle bigger, and that's how it works. The angle size determines the size of the side. So same thing here. This seems like a reasonable answer to me. There you go. They're close, but they're not exact. So that's the second type. The last type is using inverse. So we found the sides. Now we want to find the angles. So to do that, we're going to use the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. In this case, all we have to do is find the inverse and pick the ratio. So here's my angle of reference, opposite over adjacent, because it's not the hypotenuse. So this is tangent. Specifically, this is inverse tangent. So when I do inverse tangent, which looks like this, all I'm going to do is put the ratio inside. The opposite side is 27. The hypotenuse, or the op adjacent side is 45. Hypotenuse, there's no hypotenuse in tangent. On this 
look. So all you have to do is hit second and you hit the tangent button and it should give you that negative one there. And then just go ahead and put in your ratio. Close it up. 30.9, so about 31. Now, we can check the reasonableness of this. This is a much bigger side than this side. So the side that, the angle that creates that side should be pretty relatively small. 31 isn't very big on a 0 to 90 scale, so 31 feels like it's an okay answer, and it is. Let's do maybe one more of those or two more, and then we're done. So in this case, here's my angle of reference. It's not the opposite side, it's the adjacent hypotenuse. So this is coat and hat. So cosine, coat and hat. So I'm using the inverse cosine to find that angle. Um, the adjacent side would be 50 over 59. So to get that look there, second cosine, and then put in the old fraction here. Thirty-two. Mm, you know, it's the small one, so probably seems okay to me. There it is. One more. Then we're all done. I was hoping there would be a sign, but there's not, so <clears throat> we'll just do this. So I have my angle here, opposite side over adjacent, so this is tangent, inverse tangent. Opposite would be 15, the adjacent side would be 43. So you can make a prediction now, based on what we've talked about, that this angle is probably not going to be very big, because 15 is significantly smaller than 43. It's almost one-third of the size of this. So find my tangent, go in and make my fraction, nineteen point two. Seems like a reasonable answer. Sorry, and the emulator just falls down. Yep, nineteen degrees. So that's it. When you're working with, and clear that out. When you're working with right triangles and trig, it's a key, number one, to find what method is going to help you remember what the ratios are. The second thing that's important is to have some little notation on your paper to remind yourself to write uh, to what side is what. And the third most important thing is to make sure, like if I have sine of 35 equals x over 12, sine of 35 equals 12 over x is significantly different. I would solve this one by multiply by 12. In this case, I have to multiply both sides by x and end up dividing 12 by sine 35. So write down these steps so that you can see them. After that, you probably don't need to write very much down. There's not a lot of point in it unless you just need to see yourself doing the steps, especially after you've been doing it a while. But writing down that step is extremely important. So there we go.